Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at budget, standard or modern decks. And this week we're taking a look at a black-green sapperling deck in standard, a token deck making lots and lots of sapperling tokens that tries to swarm the opponent. So let's take a look at the entire deck list here, starting out with our one drops, where we have the triumphant return of Lanor Elves to standard, a one mana one one that can tap to add green mana to our mana pool, so helps us ramp into our bigger things and just uh, speeds up the deck by turn, which is very powerful. Next up we have Argos Bloodfast, which we can use to gain some card advantage, shines against more controlling strategies that don't pressure your life total, where uh, paying 2 life and 2 mana to draw a card doesn't hurt you as much. Then we have 2 copies of Vicious Offering as a removal spell of choice, 2 mana to give a creature minus 2 minus 2, we can also kick the Vicious Offering by sacrificing a creature, and then it does minus 5 minus 5 to target creature, so it can even take out a Hazard for example. And of course in a deck with lots of uh, tokens running around, we can pretty easily sacrifice a creature if we want to. We also have two copies of Fungal Plots, a 2 mana enchantment, which is another way for us to gain card advantage. So we can pay 2 mana, exile a creature from our graveyard to make a 1 1 sapperling token, and we can sacrifice 2 sapperlings to gain 2 life and draw a card. So it's another way to draw extra cards in the deck and to kind of recycle creatures in our graveyard by making extra sapperling tokens. And being able to sacrifice sapperlings can also be very useful to finish off an opponent, as we will see in just a second. Next up we have 4 copies of Sapperling Migration, 2 mana to make 2 1-1 one, one Sapperling tokens, and we can also kick it by paying 6 mana total to make 4 1-1 one, one Sapperling tokens. So a very versatile card and helps us turn on all the various synergies in our deck. Then we have 4 copies of Song of Freilis, which is a saga, the new card type from Dominaria. So the first turn we play Song of Freilis, all our creatures turn into mana dorks, so we can tap them to add any color of mana to our mana pool. The second turn the same happens, and then on the third turn they'll get a plus one plus one counter, gain trample, indestructible, and vigilance until end of turn, so you can just attack with everyone pretty freely and get in a ton of damage, especially if you've been able to empty your hand and make a ton of tokens on the previous two turns, which is kind of the goal of Song of Freilis, is to empty your hand, so you can attack with all your creatures on the third turn. Then we have 4 copies of Spore Crown Thalad, which is a 2 mana 2-2 two -two Lord for Sapperling and Fungus creatures, so they all get plus 1 plus 1, which is a very powerful effect in a deck that's going wide with a whole bunch of tokens. Then we have 4 copies of Yavimaya Sap Herd, a 3 mana 2-2 two -two that makes a 1-1 one -one Sapperling token when he enters the battlefield, so just a nice role player helps us put some bodies in play for Song of Freilis and eventually to swarm our opponent. Then we have 3 copies of Slimefoot the Stowaway, a 3 mana 2 3 legendary creature that says whenever a sapling we control dies, Slimefoot deals 1 damage to each opponent and we gain 1 life. So that's a very powerful effect in general. Against uh, sweeper effects for example we can make sure to still deal a lot of damage to the opponent. And for 4 mana Slimefoot can also make a 1 1 sapling token, so we can use our spare mana to make additional sapperlings, which is a very nice effect, and also makes it so we don't have to overextend and commit a ton of resources to the board to still put up a whole bunch of sapperlings. And a Slimefoot combines especially nicely with Fungal Plots, since we can always sacrifice 2 sapperlings to gain 2 life and draw a card, so combine that with the Slimefoot's ability to deal 1 damage and gain 1 life when we sacrifice a sapperling, we can make sure to maybe burn out our opponent at some point when they're low enough on life. Then we have 4 copies of Spore Swarm, 4 mana to make 3 sapperling tokens at instant speed. The instant speed helps us play around sweeper effects by casting this in the opponent's end of turn, and just helps us put more tokens into play, which turns on Song of Freilis to help us ramp even more, and just gets a critical mass of uh, tokens in play. Then we have 4 copies of Tendershoot Dryad, probably the most powerful card in the deck, a 5 mana 2-2 two -two with Ascend, so as soon as we have 10 or more permanents in play we gain the city's blessing for the rest of the game. And at the beginning of each upkeep, so both our upkeep and the opponent's upkeep, we get a 1-1 green sapling creature token, and sapperlings we control get plus 2 plus 2 as long as we have the city's blessing, so that's a very powerful anthem effect to help us close out the game. 
And then last but not least, we have one copy of Verdant Force, which is kind of a bigger version of Tender Shoe Dryad. Doesn't have the whole Anthem effect attached to it, but for 8 mana we get a 7-7 that makes a Sapperling token at the beginning of each upkeep, so it's a little bit less vulnerable to damage-based removal. Then our mana base is pretty straightforward, we've got 4 Blooming Marsh, 8 Forests, 6 Swamps, and for Woodland Cemetery, along with one Arch of Oraska, which is a way to draw extra cards if we have the City's Blessing. Then our sideboard, we have four copies of Duress against more controlling decks, two copies of Fungal Infection, which shines against the more aggressive red decks, where we can maybe take out a creature and make a Sapperling token at the same time. We have another copy of Argol's Bloodfast against more controlling decks, a Sorcerer's Spyglass, which is pretty versatile, can name Planeswalkers or can even name cards like Gate to the Afterlife to prevent the opponent from uh, searching up uh, Godfarer's Gift. We've got two more Vicious Offering for when we need more removal. We've got two Crushing Canopies, which can take out enchantments, but also flying creatures like Lyra Dawnbringer, which has been rising in popularity. Two copies of Dispossess against the Godfarer's Gift strategies and a Thrashing Brontodon for artifact and enchantment removal. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and the sand looks good. Turn on Elves, turn to can go Migration, tank for one, can go Bloodfast, start drawing some cards. Not taking full advantage of the turn on Elves play, but still lots of cards we can draw into and just having the extra mana. Even if we don't immediately use the extra mana, it's still nice to have the extra mana available going forward opponent with irrigated farmland, so it looks like maybe blue-white, probably control. Spore Swarm's nice. Don't mind getting a sapling migration out there. It's also nice to resolve Argyll's Bloodfast. Think, given that we're not gonna draw cards with the Bloodfast right away, it's probably better to just play a migration and attack for one. Next turn we can Cast a Spore Swarm, put it on Band Colors, so they also have green in there. So we do have to watch out for Syncopate for one. Could also have an Acid Scatter for the Spore Crown Salad. So lots of interesting options. I think we just attack for two, and then go for the end of turn Spore Swarm. Put on takes it, we'll say go. And opponent with Spring from Spring to Mind, so it looks like they're ramping. Fumigate could be painful if we just go Spore Swarm into Spore Crown Salad. Do get to hit them for a bunch, but then a Fumigate would be pretty devastating. But not doing anything doesn't sound great. So we could hit them for 10 here, or we can Blood Fast draw a card, hit them for 5. I think we just go for the Throat here and hope they don't have the Fumigate. Then we'll play a Bloodfast. Alright, there's a Fumigate. Put him back up to 14. Well, at least we get to draw two cards here. Let's draw another one. Fungal Plots is going to be pretty good here as well. So we can probably just go Sap Herd plus Elves. And then next turn we can go Fungal Plots, activate twice. Put on Cycles a cast out. And there's the approach. Opponent back up to 21. Can Fungal Plots use it twice and just attack for 4 here. Seems okay. So let's activate Fungal Plots, get rid of Lanor Elves. Use it again, get rid of the Thalad on top. 
All right, there's Thunder Shoe Dried. Let's go for it. Attack with everyone. And I think we're also fine attacking with the Elves. Bone could have a Cell Wreckage here, but then we can sacrifice two Saplings in response to draw an extra card. And then we still get a few extra lands, which is good with the Fungal Plots as well. Bone on down to five. Get an extra Sapling here. And opponents cast Mind, so they're closer to their approach. Alright, and they drew another one, so we're just dead. Alright, on to sideboarding against Band's approach. So definitely want all copies of Dress. And then our other Bloodfast. And Thrashing Brontodon's gonna be okay as well. Crushing Canopy can take out some annoying enchantments. Definitely want to take out Vicious Offering. Can probably shave a Slime Foot. A Verdant Force. Can probably take out some Song of Freilies, since being super fast on the board isn't always great against opposing Fumigates. Alright, let's try this. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, this hand looks okay. Turn 1 Lanor Elves. All right, turn to Migration. Attack for one. Next turn we can go Song of Freilies plus Migration. Opponent with a Search for Ascanta. All right, we picked up a land, so... Can go Song of Freilies. Then we still have four mana. Not quite enough for Tender Shoot Ride. But almost. So let's go Song of Freilies. And then we can Migration again. Kind of try to go under a potential Fumigate. Yeah. So next turn we'll have access to 8 mana. At the very least. If they don't mess with our creatures. So we can easily play it under Shoot Dried. Opponent with a Spring, so setting up for Fumigate once again. Alright. Time to play Tender Shoot Dried. And hit them for... 12 damage. Down to 5. And hope they don't have the Fumigate again. At least we have the City's Blessing. So if we do get up to 5 mana again, we can play Thundershoot and have those 3-3 uh, Saplings. Alright, and our opponent scoops it up. Probably means they don't have Cellular Wreckage in their deck. Uh, do we want to reconfigure anything? Don't think so. Did see Search for Ascanta there, but I don't think we want the Crushing Canopies. Yeah, I think we just run it back. Just goes to show that they don't always have the Fumigate. Yeah, this hand looks okay. Bit more interaction with Duress. Don't get to play Elves on one unless we pick up an untapped green source. Alright, so I think we just go tapped Cemetery here. Don't really want to Duress them on turn one. Kind of want to wait until the turn before they can potentially Fumigate us. Turn to Thamonic Compass. Not all that great against the token deck. Picked up a Sapling Migration. I think we still land our elves. Then next turn we can Spore Swarm into maybe Tender Shoot. Seems okay. But then since we are curving out now, it's probably okay to duress the opponents with our spare mana. Alright, double seal away Excellence Binding Hour of Promise Fumigate. So those seal aways can get rid of our land or elves, but that's okay. Excellence Binding on Tender Shoot is gonna be annoying, but I think we have to take the Fumigate here. Even though we do have Fungal Plots to kind of recover from a Fumigate, it's still going to be the most annoying card. And our opponent is stuck on two lands, so they might never get to five mana, but it's a bit ambitious, I think. Play land or elves, say go. Let's see if they find the land. They do, but it's tapped, so... Don't need to worry about seal away quite yet. 
Blooming Marsh, right on time. So let's just say go, end of turn Spore Swarm. Opponent can seal away the Lanor Elves end of turn if they want to. But that's fine by me. Instead looks like our opponent's using Thomatic Compass to uh, look for another land, which makes sense. Gets the planes. So it looks like we are going to get to Spore Swarm here. Picked up another Lanor Elves. All right, so in the face of Ixalan's Binding, double seal away Hour of Promise. How do we want to handle things? So if we just jam Thunder Shoot Dryad, let's see, we'll have four, nine permanent, so not quite a City's Blessing. So I don't think that's worth it yet. I think we just play a Migration here. And then we can play another Elves into Fungal Plots and attack for three. This way, if opponent does somehow manage to wipe the board, we can always sacrifice Sapperlings to draw cards in response. And then next turn we'll have the Tenor Shoot Dried pumping the team right away to deal a ton of damage. Opponent with a tap to Desert, so they don't get to Hour of Promises. So your opponent is just sitting on double seal away Ixalan's Binding Hour of Promise. They have one unknown card in hand, so it's probably worth checking that out. And otherwise we just get to take the Hour of Promise or Ixalan's Binding. And it looks like the extra card was another copy of Hour of Promise. So I think we just take the Ixalan's Binding here, leave them with, sure, a lot of ramp in Hour of Promise. But uh, as long as the Tenor Shoot survives, we'll be fine. So our opponent has double Hour of Promise, double Seal away in hand. And now we get to Tenor Shoot Ride them. Just need to make sure not to attack with our Tenor Shoot here. Otherwise, they get to seal away. Opponent might seal away two of our tokens here. All right, they just take it. Opponent's down to two. They need to top deck a Fumigate right now. And even if they do, we get to draw a bunch of cards with our Fungal Plots. Opponent finds an island. Tendershoot makes another token. Plays the island. If they tap out for Hour of Promise, they're dead. And they scoop it up. All right, managed to beat Bant Approach onto the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand looks okay. Lots of Sapperlings and two Spore Crown Thalads to pump them. As long as we find a third land, we should be fine. Opponent with a turn one Fatted Pool, so maybe Blue Black Control. Uh, let's play Forest Say Go. All right, another Blue Black land into Glintsleaf Siphoner. So it looks like a Blue Black Midrange. Well, we do get to make two tokens here, which technically trade for the Siphoner. Don't know if we want to block, but there's the option. And in fact, our opponent's not even attacking. All right, so fortunately didn't find a third land yet. So our only play is Spore Crown Thalad here. Interesting, they're trading for a sapling. So not sure what that means. Maybe their hand's just a bit slow and they want to trade resources. All right, they have a second siphoner. Makes more sense. So this one will be able to draw them a card. All right, I guess we'll play another Thalad here. Attack for six. Opponent is down to 12. Opponent does get to draw two cards here. And Champion of Wits to play. It doesn't have any great blocks here. So it's just a way to filter their draw. Next turn we might just play a third Spore Crown. And they discard Lyra, Dawnbringer and a Commit to Memory. So they are playing three colors. But they haven't found any white mana yet. Alright, I guess uh, our only play is a Thalid here. Could also play Lanor Elves, but that seems a bit weak when we can play another Lord, and our opponent scoops it up. All right, so up against, I guess, Asper mid-range, since they also had White in there. How do we want a sideboard? So there's nothing in particular that I want. Sorcerer Spyglass can maybe name Scarab God, which I assume is in their deck. Could bring in some Vicious Offerings to kill Glintleaf Siphoners, but it also slows down our plan. Fungal Affection is kind of nice since it kills the Siphoner and the 
Champion of Wits for just one mana. Might just be better than Vicious Offering. Although Vicious Offering can also kill maybe a Lyra Dawnbringer if we kick it. I think I'll try one Fungal Infection just to try it out. And maybe cut a Verdant Force. I expect our opponent to maybe bring in some Sweeper effects. And then uh, it's going to be difficult to combine Song of Freilies to ramp out a Verdant Force if they do. Still don't think we want Duress. Yeah, we'll try it like this. Alright, this hand's pretty slow, but it is powerful once we get up to Tendershoot Dried. And we have some draw steps in between, so hopefully we draw into some more cheap cards we can play in the meantime. Turn 1 Concealed Courtyard, so our opponent finally has white mana. Drowned Catacomb. Alright, another Spore Swarm, not exactly what we were looking for. But I guess it helps with getting the City's Blessing. Looks like a Champion of Wits. Yep. This card's cast out and bloodfast. Alright, there's a migration which we can play. Next turn, Spore Swarm into Tendershoot with uh, City's Blessing. That's not bad. Four mana. A Lyra Dawnbringer might be difficult to beat with this hand. Maybe we should just have more Vicious Offerings. Don't mind attacking here, even though Poran does get to put the Champion of Wits in the graveyard. Should still have the City's Blessing with the Spore Swarm into Tannershoot. Poran says go. Spore Swarm. Might actually be safer to wait a turn on the Tannershoot, in case they do have a Sweeper effect. And then we can just go end of turn Spore Swarm again, and then hit them for a whole bunch if they tap out. That's probably better. Attack for four. Could also play the Lenor Elves, but don't see a reason to do that yet. Alright, there's a Scarab God, that's fine. Don't have any creatures in the graveyard. Guess they can get back a Champion of Wits. But they're gonna take a ton of damage here. Untap. And yep, Tender should dry it and they should just be dead here. We've got 3-3 uh, three, three sampling tokens attacking. Opponent's got one blocker. And that's uh, 18 damage coming across, and their opponent scoops it up. Awesome, managed to beat Esper midrange. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand's okay. Don't get to play Lanor Elves on turn 1, unfortunately. But still, if we get up to Tandershoot Dried, we're going to be able to do some powerful things. And there's Blooming Marsh. So, Elf on turn 1. Turn 2, we could play a Slimefoot opponent with turn to Azor's Gateway, so some sort of uh, mono black control deck, and Spore Swarm can't quite play that one, so I think I'm okay playing a Slimefoot here. Uses up our mana efficiently, next turn we can Spore Swarm, followed by a Thalad. Opponent uses the Gateway, discards another one, says go. So let's attack for two. And say go. Could also use Slimefoot's ability instead of uh, playing Spore Swarm if maybe we suspect a Sweeper effect is incoming. But just being able to curve Spore Swarm into Tendershoot Dried is going to add up to a lot of damage. Opponent uses their gate again, gets rid of a land, and taps out for a Filigree Familiar. Opponent's going to take a beating here. Turn 3, Spore Swarm, untap. Land and wow, we have a ton of Tender Shoots here. I swear we only have four in the deck. And that's the City's Blessing on turn four. Attack with everyone. Put on Chumps. Draws a card. And a 12. And even in the worst case scenario where our opponent does have a sweeper effect, we do have Slimefoot in place. So our opponent's gonna take quite a bit of damage. Opponent uses Gateway. Gets rid of a, I see, Josu Vast, so that's what they're trying to ramp into with their gateway. Exile standard should, but we have another one, and that should be pretty much game. Alright, on to sideboarding against Mono Black, Azor's Gateway. So I'm guessing Thrashing Brontodon is going to be okay. Don't think we want to go as far as Dispossess or Sorcerer's Spyglass. And then, let's see, Duress. Could be okay, don't know how many 
non-creature spells their opponent has in their deck, they just played Filigree Familiar, they showed us a Josu Vess. Can probably assume Argyle's Bloodfast is going to be okay. Opponent might also have the, the Shade for triple black, given the whole Gateway and Mono Black situation. So that might be a reason to bring in more copies of Vicious Offering. Eh, that's probably reasonable. I guess we can cut a Verdant Force. It's probably one of our weaker cards in the deck in general. So don't mind shaving that one. And I guess we'll shave a slime foot. Try something like this. If we see a ton of sweeper effects out of the opponent, we can readjust, maybe bring in some duresses or uh, not commit as heavily into the Song of Freilis plan. This hand looks quite good. Turn one elves, turn two sap herd, turn three spore swarm. Nice aggressive start. Let's see if they have a fatal push. They do. Well, at least it's not a fungal infection. Opponent could have had a 1-1 one -one sapperling out there as well. Argyle's Bloodfast, that's fine. Alright, so turn 2 plays a bit underwhelming. Just a land go. Don't think we want to play Song of Freilis on an empty board. So turn 3, Sapperd. Turn 4, maybe Song of Freilis into Spore Swarm. And I think I prefer playing the Sapperd over Slimefoot here. Since that sets up better with Song of Freilis. Opponent draws a card with Bloodfast. That's okay. So yeah, if we can uh, go Song of Freilis into Spore Swarm, that's a pretty powerful turn. And Cabal Stronghold, another reason to be mono black. Doesn't net the mana quite yet, but it could do so in a couple turns. Four mana for Mastermind's Acquisition. Searching their library for a card could be a sweeper effect, but uh, we can play Spore Swarm at instant speed. All right, Tender should dry it. So yeah, I think we go Song of Freilis. And say go. Opponent probably knows we have the Spore Swarm here, but doesn't change much. And if they do have a Sweeper, we can just float mana in response to the Sweeper and then play our Spore Swarm afterwards. So that's not an issue. Instead, they just play a 4 mana, 4 5 mana Josu Vest. That's okay. So end of turn. We'll Spore Swarm. Untap. Have a ton of mana available. Alright, so let's see, I've got 5 and 9 mana total, so if we play a Tender Shoot Dryad, could do some serious damage, opponent cannot Fatal Push the Tender Shoot, but the problem with that play is that we're committing pretty hard into a potential Sweeper effect, so we might be better off playing Slimefoot, and then we can always Spore Swarm as well, that seems okay, and playing Slimefoot doesn't really give away that we have another Spore Swarm here, since we could just use Slimefoot's ability, so let's say go, hope they don't have the Sweeper, and if they do, we just Spore Swarm and drain the opponent for a bunch with Slimefoot. Could also draw a card with Arch, but I think we prefer getting some creatures in play. Alright, our opponent did search up a Golden Demise. So let's float some mana. Let the Golden Demise resolve. Opponent loses a bunch of life. Fatal push on Slimefoot, but they didn't have Revolt yet, so that's kind of a mistake. So let's Spore Swarm, and then next turn we still get to do some damage with Song of Freilis and Dendershoot Dried, and presumably they're out of Sweepers now, so Dendershoot's more likely to survive. So unfortunately we can't actually play the Dendershoot Dried since we didn't pick up an untapped land, so I guess in response what we can do is activate Slimefoot to make an extra token. Could have also played the Lanor Elves here, but we're kind of hoping to draw into a land for Tender Shoot. Although maybe playing land or else would have been better there. Not sure. Since it does guarantee that we can play the Tender Shoot next turn. But I don't think we're in a hurry here. We can play it a bit slower. So we get to attack. Opponent can prevent 3 damage. They'll take 6 down to 8. And we have a pretty good board state going. And if our opponent plays another sweeper, they'll take a ton of damage from Slimefoot. So our opponent makes the obvious block. They're down to 8, and they'll need another Golden Demise here. Field of Ruin can take out our Arch, but we don't really mind. And their Cabal Strongholds, they have two of them in play now, still don't generate extra mana. Two cards in hand, and their opponent does use Field of Ruin, so we'll get another Forest. So now, let's see, the Cabal Stronghold has four Swamps in play, so still doesn't generate extra mana, but it does filter colorless mana into black mana, which could be relevant. And a battle at the bridge for x equals 3. Alright. 
spawn and gain some life back, and now attacking might not be a great idea. Alright, so we missed on the fifth land, so we can't play the Tender Shoot yet. So we can deal four damage if we attack with all the Saplings. If we attack with everyone, they block Slimefoot, they take six down to four. That might actually be fine. And then we can go Sapling Migration into Lanor Elves and set up for the Tender Shoots next turn. They can transform the Bloodfast if they want to. They do. It's uh, not a Swamp, so it doesn't count for Cabal Stronghold. And Joseph has attacking. Probably means they have a Sweeper Effect incoming, otherwise they wouldn't attack. So I'm gonna block here. Don't need all the Saplings. So we can double block Joseph Vass, prevent four damage essentially. And alright, looks like they had another Joseph Vass instead. I guess that also makes sense. And a Bloodfast. So they're not quite dead to the Tender Shoot Dried, unfortunately. But still in a lot of trouble. And their opponent scoops it up. Alright, managed to beat the Mono Blank Gateway. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.